Well, hi, everyone. I'm Steve Carver. So glad that you're joining me here at my home office in Dunn, North Carolina, because tonight I am so excited to be able to start a new spring season uh, with all of y'all and get excited about the the new season, warm weather, green grass, and people wanting to get outside and reach down in their pocket and give you your money out of their pocket. So that's uh, that's what, as entrepreneurs, that's time for us to get really excited, knowing that there's a, a new season around the the, uh, uh, the corner. All about marketing is where we're going to be tonight from the startup companies, and I know several of you are just getting started to Several of you have, uh, have gone forward and actually got a marketing platform, and I'm so proud of you that we all can learn something uh, all the time. And I've been marketing now for over 40 years on my own in business for over 60 years, but involved in marketing for a long time. And it is a it is a changing day every day. It's something that you do, and then you redo, and you just keep on because everything is changing so much. The fact of the matter is, seasonal marketing is the most powerful thing that I deal with, and most of us here in North Carolina, where we have full four full seasons, it's really important that we uh, focus on that and use that because our clientele it gets excited at different times of the year about different things, which means that we can sell them lots of different products. But the bottom line is, no matter how focused and excited that we get and focus on the season or on the holidays or the opportunities that's here now, we have to have a structured marketing plan to work with. Uh, otherwise, it's kind of like people say, it's like putting lipstick on a pig is still a pig. Well, putting marketing on them, uh, putting uh, seasonal ideas and slogans and all these things we'll talk about tonight trying to make that work with a marketing plan that's, that, that's not well all greased and ready to go to work. I don't know, get anywhere. We need both. We need the vehicle and we need the fuel. The vehicle is a structured marketing plan, which we'll get into deep tonight. But the fuel is being aware and awareness of what's going on around us, uh, being shrewd and being mindful and, and being assertive to make sure that we are plugged into what's happening but being plugged in with something that can help move us forward. So we do want uh, to have a, a, a high-performing marketing campaign that doesn't cost us a lot of money so that we can move forward and make it happen. The campaign that I like to teach and have for a number of years now uh, is the one that we're going to call the, the um, Golden Goodness Marketing Campaign. It's uh, very effective, got a good structure to work with, and y'all that are just joining us, I'll get to a, a welcome back to you in just a minute. But the golden goose is that, that wonderful animal that keeps giving us golden eggs. A good golden goose marketing campaign will keep giving us good sales year after year and help make our business sustainable. My name is Steve Carver. This is my presentation number 1112, and I appreciate you being uh, joining me on my journey into entrepreneurship. Been on it quite a few years, and thank you for letting me join you as you go along too. I'd like to say that uh, uh, I am not a lawyer and not a, a certified public accountant, uh, but I am a fellow that's been in business now for a long time, still very active in business. I had a great business day today, uh, working with my ad campaigns. I did some videos today, uh, paid a lot of bills, so I did some bookkeeping today. I uh, talked with a few customers. I'd like to have a few more phone calls, but at least I, I, I had a couple, took a few credit card payments, and I got a few checks in. So uh, all in all, I'm, I'm pleased with today and look forward to tomorrow. But the best advice I can give you is always get a second or a third opinion when you're making a really important decision. And we are so lucky to have in North Carolina within our community college system Every community college has a small business center uh, that is there to help you, is there to help new businesses and people that's been in business to try to go to the next step forward. We're sponsored tonight by the community college in Nash County, North Carolina, 
and that small business center is directed by Ruthie Holloman, and she is a fantastic director, and I'm really excited about helping you. So if you are in her area and would like to get some advice, I use the resources of the small business center, which are free, which are confidential, and which are very professional, I suggest that you do it. Take advantage of it. It's like adding free employees to your business. And you can give Ruthie a call at 252-451-8344 or send her an email. The email's on your screen there. If you are not near Nash County and would like for me to help connect you with a small business center near you, just uh, say so on the chat button there and let me know or send me an email and I'll be glad to, to make the introductions for you and, and uh, help you get set up. Ruth has already sent those who uh, uh, registered early. She's already sent you copies of, uh, of your study guides for tonight's presentation. But if you're coming in late and haven't, uh, didn't pre-register, make sure you go to chat and give me your name, hometown, and uh, email address, and I will send to you uh, the study guides connected with the night. And maybe this is the most important group of study guides I've ever sent out. A lot of this stuff is brand new and will be quite helpful for you as you go along. Uh, you'll have a study guide that basically goes over the talking points of tonight's lesson. And tomorrow I'll be sending you a, a link to a, a YouTube video that we're recording tonight. So you'll be able to watch that video, take screenshots, remember any slides that you want to hang on to it and put it to work. So it's going to be really important tonight that you do that. So. Make sure I've got that email address uh, for you. And Perkins, I, I don't see your email address listed on the screen here, so make sure you, you give that to me if you would. I'd appreciate it. But we're going to be talking about uh, 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 some marketing stuff for springtime, and the, uh, the emails that I'll send to you have all this written down in a, on a Word document, so you'll be able to copy it and use it and plug it into to, uh, to your campaign and go from there. So make sure I'm, uh, you look out for the email. I'll be sending you a study guides. Congratulations to Mike e. Mitchell, Roanoke Rapids, our first in class. Uh, really uh, uh, just a, uh, on fire for the last few months uh, promoting our business and uh, videos and marketing techniques and using a lot of the stuff that we've been talking and teaching me a lot about uh, how to uh, do some marketing and, and crafting. So congratulations uh, so much, Ms. Mitchell. We're proud of you, proud that you're a part of the Academy and hope you'll hang with us for a lot of years so that we can help other people as well. We're just really very proud of you. So thank you for being with us tonight as well. And I always uh, want you to keep coming back and moving up in the ranks. Joanne and Raleigh, and they got an extra mile award in, during the last semester. She's not on board with us yet, but she started up a brand new insurance company. So proud of her and, uh, and for the extra work she did. She went from zero to 100 right away. And JR, you are with us tonight. Uh, good to see you here. The round of applause for you for all your uh, heavy work and, and uh, moving forward, trying to get your business up and running. So proud of you in, in the uh, 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 cash management counseling for your customers and helping individuals uh, have a better life by better management of their assets. So, so proud of you and thank you so much. I uh, look forward to working with you hopefully for a lot of years as well. Uh, we did have a great semester last semester. We had 24 participants from all over the country, uh, folks as far away as Missouri and New York. So we had uh, a lot of folks with us. And we had uh, uh, lots that got their uh, certificates, which uh, this course that you're involved in now, you can get those too. Uh, we got uh, several folks that got their certificates. And if I can get some quizzes turned in, uh, several more will be eligible as well. <laughs> Excuse me. We did get one new uh, member of the academy came through by doing extra homework, passing all the tests, doing uh, all the homework. And so that was Joanne. We welcome her as a member. And we had four members that moved forward in their uh, investment and their mem membership to higher level. So congratulations to you guys as well. Uh, I don't lay out the table. We'll have plenty of information for everyone to take up. It's up to you how much you want to involve yourself. 
Uh, if you want to go the extra mile, do the homework, do the assignments, and really try to put into play what we're teaching and move your business forward now, we're all for you. We're going to push for you. But if you just want to coast along, take it in, uh, move along at your pace, that's very important as well. So uh, I'll push, but I'm not, I don't want to push you out of the room because you're always welcome to come back time after time, semester after semester. So our spring class is already up and running. This is the third in a six-part series. I had several people to spend with us already, and I'll keep up with the attendance as we go. Uh, you need to attend at least five of the six sessions to be eligible for certificates, so I plan to do that. Again, Sir Wakey, thank you for being with us, and keep right on with your craft, crafting business. Pamela's had a great week, Pamela Allen down in Rose Hill. Springtime is coming. She says she might not be as much in touch with her because her seasons is really up. But in the last two weeks, she's come forward with her mission and vision statements, sending a great, uh, a great testimonial of appreciation for the, uh, for the classes, and, and we do appreciate that, and that really helps if we can give our sponsors a pat on the back. Uh, but she came forward also with a menu of the different things that she's selling. As soon as her market is open, I'll be sharing that with all of us, and maybe we can drive down there and buy something from her. Tisha's uh, very busy with her uh, uh, stitching business, and, and I look forward to having her back on board with us as well. Dusa Maria uh, in New York has uh, moved forward with her Facebook page and uh, crank it up and got some more information coming our way, and we appreciate you staying with us from New York City. Makes us all feel better to have a New Yorker with us from time to time. So a big round of applause for Darcy. Darcy, I'm so proud of you and all the big work that you're doing uh, moving forward to uh, right on the edge of opening your own floral business. And just so proud of you and looking forward to working for you. We can say to you that her website is already up and active. Uh, she has a, a pushed it hard on social media. She's in a trial basis now, but it is beautiful. I had a chance to go through with it today, and we all can learn but from what Darcy's been doing with such beautiful marketing techniques and just looking so forward to you getting up and running and fingers across and everything goes really well. I love the way you got your menu of products uh, out where people can see them and just click on the different arrangements they might want to buy. Uh, buy it right online, and then you'll take care of them. So, so good, so well done. Uh, enjoy the way you've got your different profit centers lined up and different uh, targeted customer groups, which all of us want to do it. She's got groups for people who just want floral arrangements. She's going to be offering workshops for folks and be looking after special events like weddings and other things. So that's so well done, Darcy. Look forward to doing it. And another big round of applause for taking it to a ne another level, another marketing uh, and profit center, offering uh, classes and designs, and especially for adults, but also for kids. So that's uh, uh, five or six uh, uh, marketing centers that she uh, is developing now and got it all tied into a very nice website. So if you, uh, if you want more information about Darcy's work, just let me know in chat or send me an email or... Uh, she's right online with us tonight. You can just uh, send her a chat directly uh, right from right from your desk there. But Darcy, you know, you really is perfect timing because tonight I'm talking about seasonal marketing, and your business is one that is so directly related to seasonal marketing, and you might actually pick up some ideas tonight that you can plug right in uh, to this spring season even right now. What I'm seeing that a lot of you are missing in our classes this year, last year and year before, I really had better luck with, with my students grabbing onto this and doing it, is get your email database started. You want a long list of, of, of uh, email addresses so you can send your website and, and um, media links right straight to your customers and not gamble on the fact of whether or not they see it on the internet or not. When you send them an email and they open up the email, they got a place they can click and go right straight to your landing pages on the internet. I can't uh, over emphasize how important this is. And wherever you're at in North Carolina now, there's a good chance that I have got a pretty substantial email list of, of, of addresses. I do not sell them. I do not give them away, but for folks that are active in these, uh, in these uh, sessions that are trying to move your business forward, 
I'll certainly loan them to you, and uh, you have to promise you you won't sell them or give them to anyone else. But I'll help give you a, a seed bed for email addresses. So, Dorothy, I hope you're you're hearing me say that. And so, Wanky, if y'all are ready to promote your database, then you let me know, and I'll help you with some email addresses to kind of seed your uh, seed your database and get it started. So it's up to you uh, to send me the photos. Uh, just like the, uh, these ladies have been doing, show me what you're doing and I'll help promote it and we'll use it as a teaching tool as well because it's so important that we share and try to try to help everybody uh, do this as much as, as we can. So work with me. Uh, after the session tonight or maybe sometime tomorrow, you'll get a survey from the uh, Small Business Network in Raleigh. They'll send you a survey and ask you to uh, grade my performance and quality of the presentation tonight. I do hope that you'll uh, fill out the survey and, and say kind words about me, of course, in the presentation, but just tell the truth. Uh, uh, that's the main thing. The truth is set us all free. So do please uh, do the survey and send it back in. Okay, let's go to that chat board. See some of you already working out. I got a few questions for you. What does RFC stand for? We've been talking about it for two weeks now, how important that RFC is, and we're going to talk about them tonight. Somebody get us started over on the chat board. Type in what the letters RFC stand for in our seminars. Darth is thanking his Raven fan customer. Do some Maria is agreeing with her. That is exactly right. The raving fan customer is the one that comes to us. We do business with them, create a relationship, and they go out in the world and send more business back to you. So important, a valuable, a valuable asset. Yeah, that's exactly right, the raving fan customer. Now, what are the three most, in wor three most important words for all of us as entrepreneurs in the selling business? The three most important words that we must say have a tattoo on us or use it all the time that open up upsells. What's, what's the buzzword that opens up upsells to our company or to, to our customers? Absolutely. Someone said, and by the way, do some has got that right in there. Let me see somebody else. By the way, we need to remember that day after day, all the time in our videos and our presentations. So that when we say to someone, uh, I've got this, I appreciate you buying it. And by the way, we've also got that. Remember how important that is uh, to do that. Now, another question is, our business, your business and my business cannot be all things to all people. It, it just can't do it. We are not Target, we are not Walmart, we're not Foodline, we can't be all things to all people. However, we must be. However, our, our business must be what? Can't be all things to all people, but it must be what? What are the words I'm looking for? Four words. Anybody remember? Question's a little harder tonight. I don't see it right in there. How about it? Our business can't be all things to all people, but it must be everything to some people. Type that in. Everything to some people. Because those some people will become your raving fan customers. It, if, if you are making the right kind of impressions and holding on to that customer, uh, they trust in you, they like doing business with you, you will be everything to them, and they will become your uh, raving fan customer. we got to remember to take care of one customer at a time. This one may be tough for some of you that hadn't been with us before, but just hang in there with us. When purchasing items for resale, when you're buying things for resale, you should be you should be buying below and selling above what? We want to buy below this thing so we can sell above this thing to ensure that we're going to be in the right place in the market. There you go. Thank you so much, JR. Fair market value. That is a legal term that we all need to plug in and, and to remember that, okay? A legal term. Fair market value. So 
those of you that have been coming for the last few nights, thank you so much and uh, enjoy enjoying steady with you. We've got some new folks with us tonight. So glad to have you with us. Uh, wow, Therese, I'm guessing that's how I'm going to be saying it. Uh, so glad to have you with us. And uh, 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 Ruthie, our, our hostess, is with us. Don't know if she's got her microphone on. I hope she will. And say hello to us. I'll, uh, when you get a chance, uh, just join us, Ruthie, and say hello to this great crowd we got with us tonight. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming. There you go. And how's things going with you, Ruthie? Everything is great. How are things with you? Nothing be better and so excited about tonight. We just got it loaded with dynamite presentation about spring marketing and and uh, tying into the seasons. We got a good crowd and. Uh, spent some time with some of our folks that are really moving their business forward, and I'm so proud of them, and I uh, just look forward to working with them. So uh, thanks for thanks for joining us. If you have anything to say, join at any time. Just come on in and let us hear it, okay? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. So all five of you are welcome to come back on these Tuesday nights, and we'll make it work. My job is to motivate. My job is to be assertive. My job is to try to encourage you to be excited and not to feel like you're alone trying to do this by yourself. Because I know that a lot of us, myself included, run my business pretty much right by myself. But I rely on my friends and neighbors and Raven fan customers and you guys. You just couldn't believe how much I learned from y'all and ideas I get from you. Uh, know that the, uh, the Academy situation here gives you friends all over the, the state. And when you're uh, in these classes, you can just communicate back and forth, and I see that going on a lot. And uh, it's just a wonderful thing to know that you're not in it by yourself. Uh, I'll try to push you, but no, any faster than you want. You need to move along at your own pace so that you feel comfortable where we're going. Okay, words of the week. We've been doing this uh, for the last semester. We'll use the same words this semester. So words of the week. What was the first word in our first week? Anybody remember? It starts with the letter S. Type it in in your chat. What was our first word for the first week? What do we want to become in business? Darcy says, yes. Lenina's with us. Thank you. Sprood. Sprood is a good word. It is not a negative word. Sprood is saying that you're working hard to be savvy, to be clever, astute, on top of your game and being intelligent. We're just not uh, coasting along. We're trying to be as good as we can do. And I want to say to you, we're so fortunate tonight to have some folks right in our class tonight, with Sarita and Sharanki and Darcy, uh, that have, have proven the fact they are shrewd, and JR is working in that direction, uh, getting on top of the game and figuring out how to make it work. Week two, what was our word? Starts with the letter M. What do we want to what do we want to try to internalize? What is that word that we want to internalize and, and hold on to? Anybody remember? Uh, Dusa Maria thinks she's got it there, right? Anybody agree with her? Type away, guys. That's right. The word is mindfulness. So important. We don't use that a lot, or I haven't used it a lot in, in my vocabulary, but I'm trying to use it more in, in these series because it is a state of being aware. It is being awake and open and having a radar on so that we're paying attention. And in tonight's presentation, our thrust tonight about seasonal marketing, it is all about being mindfulness about where our customers are and what seasons that they're dealing with. Now, the word for tonight, the word for tonight starts with the letter A, and it is assertiveness. And I've already used that tonight. I'm, I need to be assertive to motivate people. You need to be assertive to motivate your customers. You need to be assertive to motivate uh, the people you're buying from to give you those good deals, and you're working hard to to uh, to, to motivate them to, in good negotiating. Assertiveness means you just can't be calm and laid back and never uh, uh, come out and get out of the shell. We have to go forward. And if you want to see someone that is going forward and, and, and using assertiveness marketing, 
uh, Sherwanky Mitchell, uh, one of our classmates, uh, her Facebook presentations and, and other social media presentations are wide open, good for us to watch. Uh, they've been inspiring me, so we need to do that for each other. But being aggressive, being willing to motivate others is something that someone who's going to stay in business has to do. So kind of pump yourself up and say, okay, Steve, I'll be assertive for a little bit. Okay, you got homework challenges, those that are new with us. Uh, they'll be in your email, different things that I want you to do to earn your certificates, but mainly to help get your business started. Mission, vision, and promise statements and core values are critical for you to understand what uh, presentations you want to make to your customers. They're important for you to make promises to yourself, and then it's really easier to hang with them. I taught, uh, uh, been teaching mission, vision, and pr promise statements for 15 years, but until last year, I really hadn't done them myself. But when I put my statements on that internet, when I put those statements on my email and my quotations to customers, I'm seeing them every day and I'm holding myself accountable. I want to encourage you to do that. You know, you've got a, a handout in your email that almost does it for you. All you, know, you have to do is uh, read through, pick out the statements you like and claim them, change them around to suit you. Five profit centers are key, at least five different ways that you can make some money. Because if you're planning on running a business just doing one thing to one little group of people, it will go south one day. It's not whether or not it's going to do it, it's when it's going to do it. But if you've got five profit centers bringing in five different uh, revenue streams to you, there's a good chance your business will make it and be very sustainable. <clears throat> and those profit centers need to be linked in such a way that you can say, and by the way, I've got this and I've got that. Uh, this is homework challenge to you. All right, let's get on Facebook. It is not perfect. It can be very aggravating, but I want you to learn to use that because it says free a marketing tool to help jumpstart your business as we have. And from Facebook, you can go right straight into Instagram if you want to get into involving yourself with that type of learning experience. But at least start out with Facebook, and that's one of your homework uh, challenges there to do that. When you're on Facebook, I want you to find me. I want you to find um, my business pages. I want you to find, uh, I've got three or four different pages on there. Uh, I'm a personal. I want you to find me. Let me know you're there. Uh, send a like or a friend so that you know, I can start monitoring what you're doing with your business and help you along with it. I'm glad to do that. We've also got a page there for the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates. Uh, uh, Find that page on Facebook and, and become a, a part of that group. Uh, I'm inviting you to do it, and then you'll see what we can do for each other in promoting our businesses and patting each other on the back uh, to move forward. <clears throat> so here's your personal invitation to be a part of the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates on Facebook anyway. Just jump right on in. My Facebook page, if you type in Steve Carver or Anthony Stephen Carver, there's a lot of people named that. But when you see one that's got that pretty uh, uh, tulip, uh, uh, tulip tree uh, on the uh, cover, uh, that's me. So join in right there, and, and uh, uh, that'll make it easier for you to find me. Okay, told you what I'm up to. Now, here's what you need to be up to, my friend. Find the endurance to stay in the game. Find the endurance to hang in there with it. And a lot of you are doing that. It's taking extra time and energy from you. I know that. I'm encouraging you to do it. But the key to entrepreneurship, the key to success in entrepreneurship is staying in it long enough to learn how it works. So every business is a little different. Your situation is a little different than everybody else. But you just got to hang in there. Don't give up and know that uh, that intestinal fortitude guts to, to make it work goes a long way. Now, through this series, we're going to talk about 40 drill skills. You've got a handout that gives you a video. I've done a video with each one of them. But we talk about about eight of them each time. So let's, let's see what we're going to pick up on. We've already gone through 16, so let's pick up on 17. Define positive cash flow and define negative cash flow. Well, that's as simple as it can be, right? You got more money coming in, you got going out, and vice versa. But I want to take it to the next step, and I want you to take it to the next step. Because in our business, no cash flow means get out of business. No cash flow means bankrupt. 
no cash flow, lose whatever you've invested so far. So we have to think of cash flow as our heartbeat, as our blood pressure. It goes. And I think it to this point. If I'm in a, 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 a meeting, uh, a conference, a quotation situation, exchanging an email with someone, talking to them on the phone, if I am having an opportunity to, to communicate with someone that I feel like has got the money to spend and buy what they're talking to me about, <laughs> that's positive cash flow because it's flowing towards me now. It's there. It's flowing towards me. Now, it's up to me and it's up to you as the salesperson and entrepreneur that you're going to be to get that money, to get an order, to create a relationship, to have a chance to, to close the deal. And if you don't do it and they move on out of your system, that's negative cash flow when they're gone and you can't reach out, touch them, and make a deal. Now, if they have money in their pocket, and they're shopping, and they're gone, that means they're talking to one of your competitors who very well indeed may suck up your money out of their pocket. <laughs> Plain and simple. you got to be in the game, and you got to think cash flow is just that darn important. Now, we're going to be talking about marketing tonight, and a lot of things come into play, especially with the Internet marketing and especially with, with the kind of things that we're doing with crafting and such as that. We have to be careful not to be saying to our customers, take it or leave it. This is it, pay the price, or that's the end of it. And sometimes when you're setting up your websites and you're doing your pricing like Darcy has been working with and like Sir Lanky is working with, it's hard enough not to say take it or leave it. Well, I deal with that too. I've got over 50 profit centers, and I price it all right there on the Internet. But we can give messages to our customers saying, you've got options. You can pay different ways for different prices or get discounts or get uh, coupons. Let them know there's some room to breathe. Let them know that, that uh, if they got a situation, maybe we can do some marketing. Maybe you can do some layaway. Let your customers know that when they look at the price, you see the click here and buy it now or go on to somebody else's web page. If that's the only option they have, you and I both know the chances are good. They're going somewhere else before they may come back and buy from you or not. So you want to have on your landing pages ways to hold them there. Give them something to think about, some different ways to, 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 to negotiate, so to speak. Everything's negotiable one way or the other. But you've got to let that customer know that or there's an 80% chance your competitor will take advantage of them. Now, some of us are brand new in the business, never sold anything before in your life, and just have no clue how to start pricing. Well, we have some pretty in-depth and uh, sophisticated pricing webinars that we do, and we may be able to do some of those in the near future. But let's talk simple now, basics. If you're uh, charging three times what you pay for something, there's a good chance you're going to be okay because you'll be able to take a third of the money you're bringing in to pay for whatever you just bought. You'll have a third of the money uh, to go towards your overhead and operating expenses, and you'll have another third of the money to go towards your taxes and your profit. So the three times rule is an excellent way to get started, but just because you have put that three times price on it doesn't mean that, that uh, you can stop there. So we'll get into that deeper tonight. The 27 times rule is a different animal altogether. This is teaching us that customers, uh, before they spend any serious money with you, are going to come back to your site or ask you nine different times to tell them something about your product. So we have to have our presentations out there continuously so that we are always in the customer's face so that we beat this 27 times rule. So you put it out there nine times, they're going to miss it two out of three times. Two out of three times, they're going to miss it. So that means you've got to put it out there 27 times to even consider that you've got something going on. So what do you mean, Steve, when you say put it out there? Well, have a continuing website. But just because you've got a website with a page on it doesn't mean the customers are going to see it. That's where the databases come in. Uh, sending customers right straight to your pages through email. 
or that's where SEO comes in, how well your search engine optimization is set up to help customers find you on the Internet. A lot of different ways to get them doing it. Maybe you're using signage or you got your signs in the right places. Business cards, or you got those in the right places. Brochures. Lots of different ways to get this 27 times rule going on, and we'll talk in depth about it early, a little later. <clears throat> Guess if, no but negotiating. If you are not trained in keeping the conversation going, if you're not trained in keeping the conversation going with your customer, then it is take it or leave it. But if you have the customer the opportunity to talk with you about this product or that product, and you find a way to find common ground with them to suit their budget, become that negotiator, then you're going to close a lot more deals and make a lot more money and create a lot more Raven fan customers if you have a way to talk to them. Now, Darcy, I noticed in your website and Sirike, I'm not seeing enough enough invitations for someone to call you or talk to you about something. Uh, you are doing a great job, but this is where these videos come into play. Your face, your voice, your invitation to the customers to give you a call or to send you an email. If you've got questions or concerns or you want to chat about your particular needs, you're welcome to call me anytime or you're welcome to call me at certain times. Now, you can say at any time because you're not obligated to answer the phone any time because you can have a message to do it. But make sure your customers know they are welcome to get in touch with you directly. When that communication starts and you have the give and take between two individuals, you have moved ahead of all the other competition just because you gave them the invitation. And if you have a welcoming voice and hear what they're saying and work through their concerns, there's an excellent chance you're going to close the deal right then. Uh, they'll be sending you a check or giving you their credit card number so you can close the deal. So yes, if, no, but. Yes, if means a customer says, hey, I'll offer you this. And you just look at them and say, well, yes, I can take that deal if. And you put the conditions on that makes it right. Yes, I'll take that deal if we can add the freight or we can add the tax to it and you're ready to do it. Or, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that, but, no, but, if we can do this, this, or that, rearrange it, we can make the deal. What we're not saying is, no, go somewhere else and spend your money. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to say yes, if, or no, but, and move this thing forward. So look forward to uh, y'all working with that. What are the most two important pages on the Internet related to your business? One is the mobile page at your website or social media, the mobile page, because most people are shopping on their telephone here. And what does your page look like when it comes up on the telephone? You need to look at it. A lot of you have not ever looked at your mobile page, have you? Well, you need to to see how easy it is to negotiate and to navigate. So we'll spend a lot of time there, but nothing is more important to your business than your mobile page as you're getting started. The second most important page are the pages that we send people to, and we're going to call those landing pages for the next few weeks. The landing pages are those pages at our website or social media where customers are coming in, we want to design that page to encourage them to buy something, to encourage them to get in touch with you right now. And that takes some talent. There's a little art form there, so we're going to work towards it. Now, I want you to keep in mind now, is it cheap, cheap, cheap? Is it your smooth advertising or good looks is the reason customers keep doing business with you? Well, it is good to think that it is, but I want to give you some facts you may not be aware of. 40% of the reason customers come back to a business and do business with them is customer service. 40%. How good are you at talking to your customer, at listening to your customer, at understanding and making them feel at ease? How good are you at knowing your products? 
And if you've got a, 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 a bricks and mortar still, you got good lights and it's safe. you got clean bathroom, you've got a good parking place. If you've got a website, is it easy to negotiate? All that's customer service. But that's only 40%. 60% of the reason my customers keep doing business with me after 64 years, I know, is hospitality. My dad taught me so many years ago, half a century ago, that it's the way customers feel about doing business with you that counts more than anything else. They'll give you some slack making mistakes. They'll give you some slack having a price a little bit higher than somebody else. As long as they're treat, if they feel like they're treated honestly and appreciated and, and you're trying to understand and to create a long-term relationship of trust. Kind of like a partnership. If we have win-win situations with our customers, they'll stay with us, and that gets right back to hospitality, graciousness, poise, staying with that customer to make them feel comfortable on good days and bad days. And you know what? Whether the business is good or bad, whether the economy is sucking or on fire, whether the inflation is on fire or, 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 or things are not that way. People are going to keep doing business, and they will choose who they go do business with very selectively. The places that give them the best customer service and a great dose of hospitality will be sustainable. The ones that don't, out of here. Tonight, I am so happy to tell you that March is here. Spring is here. The grass is going to start growing in a couple of weeks, and people are already thinking springtime. Got a little spring in their step. So I'm happy to say to you that old Steve-O here and, and, and Ruthie are bringing you a presentation tonight. It's going to give you some real tools to put into your tool belt uh, for your spring campaign. Now, I don't want this to be boring. I want it to be exciting, but I got a lot of information here. I'm going to send it all to you in the email tomorrow, and Ruth has already sent, uh, uh, sent it to you as well. So we're going to just look at, at, a, at a grand selection of marketing tools that you can put into play to get in touch with the excitement that your customers have. Now, I'd like to take full credit for all this, but I can't do it. I was surfing the Internet for these particular things, and I found this website that just was spot on that I could take what they offered and build on it. So it's the mobilecuisine.com. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a whole website built to food trucks and things like that. Really great. So in your handout and here on your screen is the links to go to their website, which is a marketing gym. So uh, I encourage folks to go there, and we're going to use some of their work to, to uh, study tonight. First thing I want to bring to you is eight new kind of ideas and strategy that maybe you haven't been playing on that you can involve in your business for springtime feelings to help people get excited about your business. Isn't that something? Eight new things to think about. So what is number one? Get vibrant. Put some colors and brightness, new look into your into your web pages, into your emails, into what you want to do. It's the flower season, right, Darcy? Make people feel good, smell good, uh, and get excited about a, a, a new look. That's what I want you to do. Be vibrant. And as you do that, go to your Facebook pages and change them. Put some springtime themes in there, and I'm going to give you something to work with. Put a new look in people for the new season. Folks that will see that and see that you're excited about doing business, guess what happens? It improves the way they consider doing business with you, but it's up to you to do it. And then look to some new things that maybe you can use to help. And I've heard of people mention it in uh, Canva. Uh, it's a marketing tool. That a lot of it is free, but you can go to their website, C-A-N-V-A, if nothing but just a look at something that is amazing, but they have got so many free tools to help you with email and web page design and, and uh, different ways of marketing, man, it's, it's powerful. So some days when I don't have anything to do and I don't know when that is going to come, but they're first on my list of something to do. I want to encourage you to go there too. I spent five minutes on their website the other day and it just blew me away. 
just blew me away. I can't wait uh, to see what some of you guys can do being young and know how to, to um, negotiate these things and such as that. Let me just stop right now. Does anybody here use Canva now? Is anyone using it now? Have you heard of it before? I see some yes. Okay. Great. Great. Fantastic. And I do agree it's a game changer. So, Darcy, you've been there too as well. You and I might want to have a conversation. You tell me how to better present this if you think it's something that our uh, academy needs to know more of and about. So, Canvas seems to be absolutely fabulous. Number two, it's springtime. And everyone in the whole world knows when you mention springtime, people immediately will say somewhere in the next two seconds, spring cleaning. Because that's what we do. We try to get all the winter dust out and try to uh, get things looking better for spring. We're tired of looking at February gloom and, 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 and such as that. It's March now, and let's move, move forward. So general cleaning is just a good thing. And let me tell you, if, if you can see my office, you can tell I'm ready for a general cleaning because it isn't just putting it out in the marketplace. It is cleaning up our own act. Uh, spring cleaning is a time for us to start cleaning up and smelling better and looking better, and we need to be doing that. Reevaluate the marketing campaigns that you are using and pep them up. Let's have that pep rally to move forward and develop some new ones, and we'll give you the tools to do it with tonight. If you got some old stock that's just in the way that didn't make your money for you, let's clean it out and go forward. Local games. Spring is here, people doing things outside, and a small business that's involved in the community and helping sponsor these local games and running and things that people do in the springtime. If you're one of the sponsors, sometimes you can do it for very little money. Uh, get some t-shirts and hats out there. Uh, show up yourself. Let folks know that you're active, uh, you're busy, uh, but you've got, you got to promote yourself. you got to have some signage or ways that they know that you're there. If they know you're there while you're there, y'all got an automatic relationship going on. So, Keep that in mind, if you can uh, support or even sponsor uh, local games, it's a good thing to do. This is a perfect way for you to introduce yourself, especially to new customers you haven't met before. If the kids are wearing your T-shirts with your ads on them or handing out flyers, or you got some fans where people are seeing uh, uh, cool, very inexpensive marketing tools, give that some consideration. Now, what I want you to think three or four times about is – uh, this is the season where people have a lot of sales and a lot of events, and they want you to buy ads in their program. A uh, man in, in Dunn, North Carolina, during the spring and, and during the fall, I would have 50 people a week coming to me from all the schools and all the churches and all the organizations want me to buy ads in their programs because that was the way they would make money. I suggest you do not do that unless you're going to be able to be on the front page or the back page and have a real marketing tool, because generally that is a good way to waste money. I'd much rather you just give them a, a, a reasonable contribution and say so, say something nice about her. Use this as a, as a prize in the drawing, because ads and programs like that usually don't promote a lot of instant uh, return on that investment. But being involved, though, will. Being, having real involvement with real uh, projection of your name and company would do that. But uh, I'll tell you when I think uh, uh, maybe you're wasting your money with certain type of ads, and that's one of them. High school annuals, uh, these uh, little programs like that, usually don't bring you back much return. However, if you can get the right location in those, it might be a different story. And depending on the group, just look it up. In your own business, or with some other people, I will encourage you to have a raffle, have a drawing, have some type of contest to get your name out there, get people involved in something new, a good way for you to collect email addresses, offer a prize and such as that. Even if you put a basket up on your counter and take a picture of it and say, guess how many Easter eggs are in this basket? The winner gets a $10 or a $50 gift certificate to buy something from you. Okay, you want to make sure that whatever you're giving away is going to come back to you, uh, so at least you have a chance to create a relationship with that customer. But give some thought of what type of reverse drawing or or or, or uh, 
whatever you can do to boost your visibility and to get more people excited about doing business with you. Organize some kind of game to, to help do that. You don't have to give away expensive things. Uh, 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 you, and you can make a drawing last from now to July the 4th if you want to and create a lot of interest in it. And when someone sends you in their name uh, to qualify for the drawing, you make sure that their email address is on there so you can add that name to your database. <clears throat> Spring marketing strategies now. That uh, contest is important. Uh, make sure that uh, you've got your coupons ready. Give some thought about how you don't get that return on investment. Now, the holidays, number five, the holiday seasons. And Darcy already noticed that's a big deal. Of course, I knew that as well in the uh, in the uh, floral parade. And, and uh, certainly, Sir Mike, is a big deal for what you're up to. But holidays are really important. And now we've got Mother's Day coming, uh, Passover and Easter. Uh, uh, think about what you can do with your type of business that might uh, tie into these type of holidays. Now, every business has been a little different. We do different things. Uh, my, my business, uh, how does it tie into the holidays? Only as gifts, maybe, that wives might give their husbands with these farm equipment. But when it comes to grass mowing now, I do a lot of grass mowing. <laughs> Excuse me. A little sneeze there. All right. So here we go. Now, you got to be careful with the holidays because you don't want to use the Lord's name in vain or to come across as being uh, uh, cheap. But there's nothing at all wrong with you appreciation, appreciating people's feelings, give them something to, to uh, enjoy, and, and to connect you and your business as someone who cares about the holidays and cares about the things that, that they do. So uh, uh, Mother's Day especially is easy for all of us to tie into and, uh, and, and to remind people how much we love our moms in uh, different ways that your business might help uh, personify that. Number six, tax refund season. Now, in just a few weeks, people will start getting back tax refunds. And a lot of businesses figure out how to get that, that tax refund to come on back in the NCU. So if you have a way, uh, something in your business that you can promote doing to help people with your tax refunds, it's a good time to do it. Now, JR, I'm thinking about you right here. Uh, people don't have some money that as they've not invested in it, and if you're in the cash management business, this is a, this is a, a, maybe the only time of year that you've got a little season you work with with people getting money that they hadn't had before. But for those of us that are selling things, we might say, okay, if you go ahead and obligate your tax refund as a down payment on this uh, uh, new thing that I'm selling, I'll, I'll lock it into you at this uh, extra low sale price and hold it for you until that tax return comes in, and then you can lock it in. That's the type of ideas I'm thinking about. Think about how in your business, if playing on the tax refunds coming back, uh, that you can use that as a marketing tool. Big, big opportunity. Number seven, go green. It is the green season, and a lot of our world is thinking about the economy, the environment, all these wildfires, uh, pollution in the lakes and things like that. And if your business is thinking along the lines of what your community is thinking on how to promote uh, those type of things and you're actually uh, uh, saying so and putting it out there, don't alienate yourself, but make yourself available and maybe sponsor some tree planting or flower planting or clean up and have some caps and t-shirts uh, uh, to promote that. Uh, so, Saranki, I know you're listening to that, but it's a, uh, selling caps and t-shirt opportunities are really big deals with a lot of folks in these classes. In a, a few minutes, I'll be giving you some good slogans to, to uh, play that out. Go green. Make it happen. Earth Day's coming around the corner. Number eight, charity. Always, and I'll save this to last, charity is so important. People are thinking uh, Easter, they're thinking being thankful, we're counting our blessings, uh, and by golly, homeless people and people that are down and out need as much help during the springtime as they do in the Christmas season. 
So maybe this is something that in your business that you might be able to tie into to show some leadership here, to encourage other people to join you or do some challenges. Be charitable, and your uh, uh, community will appreciate the fact uh, that, that you are aware, you're mindful of other people's needs, and you're all about being a giver as much as you are a taker. That will never backfire on you and will always bring in goodwill. So there are some ideas about new strategies to use. Now, again, I don't uh, go through this next group real uh, fast, but I want you to see how powerful it can be for your business. So these are slogans. I mean, we're doing the thinking for you as far as what words to put into your ads. Uh, to do that. One of you mentioned to me earlier, did you have a little hard time finding the right words? Well, by golly, here's a whole bunch of them. Over a hundred will go forward. Let's just talk about general slogans indeed. And I got you a whole page full here. A good example, my favorite was uh, a good slogan, a time to grow and renew. Uh, uh, lots and lots of different time for spring cleaning. Uh, put, put your words into your ads. Let the customers Understand that you're saying what they're thinking. Uh, first days of spring. Uh, uh, excuse me. Green, green grass uh, is bringing on great savings, uh, great discounts. So put those words to play. Words are very powerful in our marketing. Spring cleaning slogans are right here. So we had a. a uh, people with us last week that were in the cleaning business, so maybe they'll get some of this too, but uh, lots of slogans can be used there from uh, all the way down the line here, about 20 of them, but bring the spring shine inside without lifting a finger. So if you're in the cleaning business, all kinds of slogans you need to put into gear and tie into the spring season. Try to be funny, put some humor in it if you can. Uh, be fresher than the spring, quit stinking, so to speak, and i got lots of good good ways to, to say that. Uh, uh, greet spring in your garden, spring out right, uh, uh, put the right smells in here. Uh, spring gives life to humans. Uh, uh, don't just pretend to be clean, be clean. So uh, good sayings here. And that one that we all will probably use if we think about it, have a place to use it, is in our display menu and message or bulletin boards. Uh, this different signage we might put up on our website or use in emails. I'm starting to use this in my email this week, and I'll, I'll send you all copies of these different things I don't put into play in, in, uh, in my marketing. Spring in action. Celebrate spring. Embrace new beginnings. Just, just good sayings, good solid messages that uh, you won't go wrong with that will do nothing itself turn people on. There's nothing in any of these that will turn someone off. And of course, that's, that's a good thing. We don't have to take that risk. Warm weather's coming. Get them ready for it. Uh, uh, the flowers are getting ready to bloom. Uh, Darcy's gonna let people know that the flowers are available and she's got them to sell. Let's get some t-shirts out of there. Here's uh, the slogans for t-shirts that are, are really cool that I think. Uh, different things you might put on your t-shirts or your hat. I like rain or shine, we're fine. Just a good positive message makes you think really good. Uh, flower power every hour. Uh, that sounds like we think that'll look good on a t-shirt or grow wild and free. Uh, slogans that, that won't backfire on you, that's a good thing. And then we have tag tag lines. These are the short, short sentences that we might say to folks uh, that we'll put into our email or our presentations uh, that, that will help you. So when you get these emails, look them over, pick out what's good to you. Lots and lots to choose from. And I really appreciate Mobile Cuisine uh, making that available and uh, look forward to seeing more of what they have to offer in the future. So let me tell you, springtime is here. That's a load that's a load of tools for your tool belt. Save them, use them, help it to turn you on. But remember, no matter how good a slogan you have or how good a, a, a campaign you have, you need a plan. And a marketing plan has to work. Now, yes, it's time that we start springtime marketing, but we need to have the vehicle to get there. So my question is to you here. Look at this slide. It is a big world out here, right? And we are small companies. We're ones and twos in small towns. How in the world can we get someone to find us 
this little less than a dot on a world map. It's hard to do, but what we're after, our goal tonight is to put together a plan, a, a way of getting everyone to focus on exactly where your message is. Having everyone to exactly focus on Kelly's website, on Kelly's uh, uh, Facebook page, on, on Ruthie's Small Business Center. How do we get the whole world to focus on one little place? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. We're going to bring them right home to wherever you are. We can put someone right there. When this whole system works, some of you know this for sure, this a little uh, uh, academic, but, but uh, elementary rather. Let me tell you what the Internet is. So you'll have a better feel for what we're talking about for the next three weeks. See that big pipe up there? It's like a great big water line. And people are putting stuff into that water line. And in this water line, things are not just going one way. They're going both ways in all kinds of ways, a million, zillion different ways, and they are called circuits. They are called networks. Small, just beams of light going through that great big pipeline. And you're on one end of it with your computer, and you're typing in what you're trying to promote, or you're typing in what you're looking for. And your objective is to make sure that the message you're putting in goes all the way through that pipeline and ends up at the other end with someone who is searching for what you're offering or who has a question to ask you. And it's our job to figure out how to get our information in and out. And the different things that we've got on our graphic here, which was one done by one of our Academy members, the search engines in Google help us a lot. Social media helps us a lot. Sites like eBay, they help us get there. YouTube is a big player now and getting bigger every day. Your raving fan customers tell people how to find you. Your print ads will have your uh, internet addresses in it. And then you can use tools like pay for click with different organizations to actually buy uh, standings in where you will show up when someone types in the search term on Google to put your page in front of your competitors. All kind of complicated, a lot going on. So my job is to simplify it to the point to let us use the tools we have to beat the game. And I want to tell you that we don't bring them right home to exactly where you are. So do you think that it's possible that you as a small business owner in eastern North Carolina could be uh, anywhere uh, that when people are searching on the Internet that you could have the first top ten spots in position someone was searching for, for you. Do you think that's possible? I want to tell you that it is. But I'm also going to tell you it won't happen by itself, and it probably won't happen quickly. That's why you have to stay in the game. But here's how it will work. You need that vision. You need the mission, determination. You have to be willing to make the investment of time and some money possibly, not a lot, but some. I suggest that you will need someone that knows what they're doing. I mean, the professional type webmaster. And you'll need some of the tools that I'm going to tell you to use, which is look and hook marketing and understanding SEO. And with a good dose of this and time and understanding, you can do it as well. I can prove that you can do it because here's a, a screenshot when I type in Carver Equipment and typed in some different things that we're doing. And on that particular day on Google, we enjoyed the first 18 spots on the web page search. That's incredible. That's incredible. And you can, I'm happy today, but this was several years ago, with the competition day, I am very pleased to end up on the, somewhere in the top 10. So but when you can get two or three spots in the top 10, A+. Plus. But if you can get the first 18 spots, you got to commence going on. So is this isn't something I just talk about. It's something that me and my web sister work at and try to learn how to do. So how do we get there? One, set the priorities that you, that you want to make that happen. Two, learn the skills and do the homework. 
set your priorities, learn the skills, and do your homework. Now, before we dive deep into a lot of this, a lot of that, I want to give you a simple five-step plan that tonight you can take and make notes on it or, or, or take your handouts and draw circles around it or print it out tomorrow. But if you take this five-step plan during the next few weeks and hang with us in this uh, uh, webinar series and, and do that homework and apply it, then you can start your business moving to the next step or to get it started. Number one, identify the profit centers that you've got to offer and how they can work as upsell items. Number two, when is your best season to make sales? What time of year, what time of month is your customers more likely to do business? And when you nail that down, you want to know that you need to have a marketing plan in play for that particular profit center at least 60 days in advance. In other words, you want to start promoting your product 60 days ahead of the season so that you are in place with the 27 times rule when the buyers start buying. Develop your pricing and discount and, and targeting strategies. Do it in advance so that I don't want you to be given discounts that you didn't plan to give. So if you're in advance, you know what you're going to be selling these products for in 60 days, you'll have time to figure out your negotiating tools. Think about your upsell opportunities and how you might be able to bundle, bundle your different profit centers so that you'll be able to offer some package deals. Darcy, I want you to be listening to that. I want you to be able to bundle some opportunities so that if a grandfather is online getting ready to send out uh, gifts to his granddaughters or to his daughters, he can get a little bit better deal if he'll give you an order for five items instead of just one. Uh, so give that some thought. Bundling and packaging is a good, good way to make that happen. Excuse the phone call, but it's my busy season too, so I'm hitting a message right there, a button that says, leave me a message and I'll call you back. So <clears throat> develop that pricing, get your upsells items ready to go. Now, know that you can be, I'm sorry. Is that one of y'all calling me? If it is, just, just uh, let me know online here. There's someone in Raleigh. Know that YouTube videos are the door opener in 2024. If you're not into YouTube videos, get there. This is kind of like at some point in time, someone says, you know, if you don't have a telephone number for your business, you're probably losing business. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have held out. They didn't want to go to a telephone, be ringing all the time and interrupting you. But well, Steve is telling you right now, March 24th, if you're not into YouTubes, you're going to be losing out. So get there. And if you're not into taking text messages to do business, you're probably losing out as well. Because you can see, here it is, uh, 745 at night, and my phone's ringing off the hook right here. That's because I tell people to call me anytime. And that's fine, but I'll take the message. Now, get your displays and your emails out and get to running. Get, get it up and down. That's the five things I want you to do. Now, what are you going to use to get there? Your website with your mobile page and your landing page being friendly. Get involved in Facebook and social media. Get good at whatever you're at. Know what email blast can do for you. Do it yourself or get hooked up with someone like MailChimp that will do it very inexpensively for you. And be ready to start sending out email blasts and people will come right straight back to your landing pages. eBay, Greg's List, uh, some of these uh, larger sites, you might play on them as an associate and improve your business. Depends on what type of business you're in. And if you've got videos, you can have your own YouTube channel. And a YouTube channel is a private website for you on YouTube. Almost no cost, and it, I don't know of anything that's any more powerful for you right now as related to videos than that. Uh, that channel will teach you how to do your own videos and move forward. 
Yeah, I'll, if, if I have your email addresses, I'll be sending you samples of how to do all of this. Now, as promised, I'm going to teach you how to create a raving fan customer. There's all kinds of customers out here, loyal customers, great customers, regular customers, those that come to see you, they like you, they love you, such as that. But for some reason, they are not raving fan customers. And the way that we create that Raven fan customer is planting some brain seeds just the right way. Yeah, you don't have to kind of imagine with me here. Because where are your Raven fan customers? They're out there, you know they are, but they're hiding from you, right? No one's came up to you and said, I sent you some business today, have they? Well, when you get Raven fan customers, you know that that's what they're doing. But right now, they're out there hiding. And you're doing everything right. You're peeking out the window. You're trying to find them. But by golly, they're just not promoting your business where well, you're doing something you had not done it yet. So I'm going to be graphic here because we don't plant seeds in their brains like we've got a shovel. Don't dig a hole right in their head so we can open it up and actually drop these little brain seeds about the size of Rice Krispies right down on their brain so they'll start growing. That's what I want you to imagine us doing when we do a couple of three things. We're going to plant those seeds when we say a sentence. As simple as that. In one sentence, plants Raven fan customer brain seeds. And that sentence is, I'm going to do everything I can to see that you're 100% satisfied with our products and services. I'm going to do everything I can to see that you're happy with our products. When's the last time a store owner told you that, or anyone told you that? Well, folks don't hear that often, and when they do, it registers, especially if you repeat it a time or two, just like I just did, because you want your customers 100% happy. Now, I didn't say you will be 100% happy because, hey, it's the real world, and some people you can't satisfy, but you can say you'll do all you can to see that they're 100% happy. That's the first sentence. That is dropping those seeds down on that brain. And the second sentence kind of presses them down so they can uh, get hold and grow. The second sentence is, you're going to be so pleased that you did business with us that you'll want to tell your friends and, and your family to do business with us as well. I'm going to do all I can to see you're 100% satisfied, and you're going to be so happy that you gave me your business that you don't tell other people to come and give me their business too. Because we're, we're going to do what we say we do. You'll have your own words. And that's fine. But these two sentences is planning the Raven fan customer brain seeds. And you've got them in there. The fact of the matter is that when you make a pledge or a promise to someone, the human nature in them says that if you come through, they will too. But they're just planning now. They hadn't started. They'll start growing. But in a few minutes, I'll tell you the closing statement on that is to how to make those brain seeds start bringing you back a return on investment. Remember those sentences. Now, they don't be in your quiz. What's next? Our marketing plan, our golden goose marketing plan, is going to tell you what's next. Now, in a serious moment here, let me tell you. As you're starting out in your business and you start depending on it, There'll be times when it's slow and no business is coming in. And you'll lay there at night and maybe not go to sleep where your stomach will feel bad because you're worried. You're worried if you're going to be in business another week or another month or this time, you know, in, uh, next month. It gets scary. Cash flow goes down. You have to borrow money or find resources or sell some stuff that you didn't plan to sell because you got to have that cash flow. And as new entrepreneurs, it comes more often. And some folks that are not in it for the long term and haven't got in place things that we've been talking about to help you uh, avoid those kind of risks, it's tough. But I'm going to tell you right now, the one thing that makes the biggest difference is that first of all, you have enough cash to do business to start with. But after you are up and running, if you've got a structured marketing plan that not only is bringing customers in 
and helping them find you, and you've got negotiating plans in place, and you've got profit centers that you can tie together into upsells, and you know how to make a sale, and you have a way to collect the money, and you make that customer happy, and then you follow through, and that customer fares with you what's next. What are they going to be buying next? Who do they know that's in the market that you might get in touch with? What items maybe should you be stocking? What's new in the marketplace they can tell you? The Golden Goose marketing plan is an information feeding machine to you. Because when you are doing this and you've been in it just a little while and you start reaping that information and applying it and staying in touch with the customers and building your database, you know what? I'm going to tell you that even though things slow down, you have in place a machine that if there's any business going on and you're out, you've got some Raven fan customers, you're going to get some business. Maybe not as much as you really like, but you'll get enough to stay in business if you've got a marketing plan that you're dedicated to, that you're working at. Not rocket science, not spending a lot of money on it, but just doing the day-to-day uh, housekeeping and getting that feedback from your customers. That's what will keep you in business through good years and bad years. Uh, how does someone stay in business 64 years in a little town like Dunn, North Carolina? with a Golden Goose marketing plan. Now, I don't tell you later on in a negotiating class, don't tell everything you know. But Ruthie is paying me to tell you things that you need to know, and I'm giving you secrets that have been learned a long time. And this marketing plan strategy is critical. Having it to work. You need more than a website. You need more than just a, uh, some profit centers. You need to know how to put it together in such a way. Notice this, this graphic here that was done by one of our associates. It's got these arrows. It's everything's going in a circle. We're always rolling. From the day we, this morning when we start up, you're dedicated to know where you're going tomorrow. Businesses need to keep rolling. They can't be stopping and starting. They need to keep rolling, and your marketing plan will help you do that. So as we go here, watch these areas. We start up here with our plan. We get all these things into place. We learn how to uh, get our targeted customer groups and how to stay in touch with them. Uh, we, we learn our by-the-way presentation so we can not only just sell one thing, but sell a lot of things to the same customer. By golly, we sell something, and we get that golden egg, which to me is making a deposit. That's a good day. And a lot of people, a lot of people that train these classes tell you, okay, you are a winner. It's over with. Take it on home. You have done the good job. But I'm telling you, you're only halfway there. You're halfway there when you make a sale. You're halfway there when you lose a sale. Because your goal was to create a long-term relationship that turns into a Raven fan customer. So when you are in that situation, you either, you're making that deposit. But to do that, I want you also to be feeding your database with how to get back in touch with that customer that you made the sale to or that you didn't make the sale to. Having a customer to come in and you're not able to close the sale doesn't mean that you lost the game. Because if you were a winner if your marketing plan bought that customer in, on this particular day, you didn't have what they needed or didn't know how to negotiate the price. But they came to you, and you worked with them, and you said, I'm going to try to do all I can to see that you're 100% happy. Then you, the next, when they leave, they don't say, well, I'm sorry we didn't do that deal with Steve. But he's a nice fellow. I'll come back and give him another chance. That's a win. That's a win, provided you have entered their information into your database and continue in touch with them. So once you do the golden egg, you're halfway home. Then we do the follow-up. And at the follow-up, we do something that's great. It's that happy ending. It is the magic marketing moment. Say that with me, magic marketing moment, because that is the time 
that you take those raving fan customer seeds that are in their brain and you soak them with fertilizer and water and it will start growing to give you what you need. First of all, you are saying to them, I'm just making sure you're happy. And to do that, you're fulfilling your commitment that you made back when you said, I don't do everything I can to see you're 100% happy. And just talking about it in an email or a phone call or in person gets that Raven fan customer seed growing. And once it gets to growing, then you're able to say to them, now tell me, didn't you say your brother was interested in buying something next week or this fall? Or what was it you were planning on getting next? What do I need to have in stock? What can I do better in my business? That feedback is what feeds the golden goose. That feedback is what tells you what's next. So when I ask you what will a good marketing plan do for you, your answer will be, tell me what's next. And I know I've got more to do down the road and my business will be still in business. Pretty incredible. I hope that sinks in. Your marketing plan needs to be a work of art, and every one of them is going to be different. But we'll be working on them together, and I'll be glad to help you with it, as will uh, Ruthie, and, and uh, just let us know. Now, on the screen now is a, a marketing plan that uh, an advertising paper up in the Husky area uses, telling people that if you'll buy these number of ads from me, you'll get a certain price. Uh, you can be a VIP advertiser. You can be uh, get different things in different publications. In other words, they've got it laid out to encourage you to buy more ads and spill more money. And that's exactly what they're supposed to do, is to bundle their packages to get you to spend more money. That's what I'm telling you I want you to do. But here's the rest of the story. Who is the worst person in the universe that you can take it, that you should take advice from uh, how to spend your advertising money? The absolute worst person. The answer is really simple. It's the person trying to sell you ads. Because they are dedicated to a company making a profit. But which company? Their company. And that's okay, that's what they do. But you are smart enough now, as a sophisticated entrepreneur, that you want to know that it's your plan that counts. And you will, you need to be able to tell them, here's what I want. Can you provide it and what's the price? And will you help me make sure that it pays its own way? Yeah, you can do that. Because 90% of advertising money is absolutely wasted. We all should uh, could just burn it. But the plans that you're going to hear tonight and next week and the week after will be low budget, high performance. Because we don't need to take the risk to lose a lot of advertising money. We need to do it right and take fewer risks. So it's your plan that, that makes a difference, not the people that's coming in. Remember... Take it or leave it marketing, more often than not, will send the customer somewhere else. Not having take it or leave it will help you have more business. Now, here's the 27 times rule. Really important. A customer has got to hear your story, see your card, see your web page, go to your website, talk to you by phone, exchange emails nine times before they will spend a significant amount of money with you. That's been true for over 40 years. Still true today. And no matter how good you are at putting your ads out there, your business cards, sending an email, uh, putting your signage up, your billboard, no matter how good you are at doing that, they will miss seeing your promotions at least two out of three times because it's a crowded world and just the human nature of things. I mean, you have put a sign right up in an intersection where they stop every day, but they stop there and they're looking this way and that way and they've never noticed your sign until the third time, maybe. The lesson here is, if they're going to see it nine times and miss it two out of three times, 27 times is the right way for us to plan a campaign. I have spent over $6 million of Steve's money in the last 60 years, well over $6 million in advertising in Eastern North Carolina. My, uh, phone books, publications, newspapers, magazines, billboards, done it all. TV ads, radio ads, well over $6 million. 
Well, that's not a big chunk of change with some great big companies, but it is a big chunk of change with Steve-O. Now, I'm not proud of the fact, but I'm happy to be able to tell you that I wasted over 75% of that money. Just wasted it. And I would love to have it back in my bank account right now, but it's gone. And I had to work hard to make that money because your advertising money comes out of your profit dollars from last month, right? So I don't want y'all to go through that. So these plans that I'm telling you right now will help you avoid that kind of major loss of your profit dollars. Because the day that I started applying this, and I'll tell you what day it was, a friend of my dad who had passed away, my dad had passed away and a friend came by, a good friend of his. He said after a, few, a year or so after dad had died, and he said, Steve, it looks like you got your business up and running. I know it was tough there the first year after your dad died. And he said, you're doing a lot of advertising, aren't you? And I said, yes, sir. I'm spending a lot of money on advertising. Staying in business, though. He said, well, uh, well, let me just ask you this, Steve. He said, all that money you're spending on that advertising, which one of those ads are working and which one of them are not? I said, I don't know. I just, I figure if, if business is doing good, I'll just spend more and more business to come in. He said, well, let me suggest to you that you find a way to figure out which ads are working and you keep doing those. But that money that, that you're spending on ads that does not work, stop. That was the challenge. And that's where we are tonight. Fast forward 40 years. How about that? Because if we can hold our ads to be accountable, then we're going to make sure that we can stop running an ad before we waste too much money on it. Now, the 27 times rule helps us get there. I'm planning an advertising campaign like you, either for my business as a whole or for a certain profit center. I actually lay it out, put out 27 blocks, look at the dates, what days of the week are best for ads to work, how much money we do doing. It. And what we have learned is, I want to keep a constant flow of very low-cost advertising uh, and marketing uh, messages going out to my customers. Low cost, five, ten dollars a click. You see what I'm saying? Facebook ads, boost here, business cards here, my internet marketing things. I'm going to look at what I'm spending over the course of the month. Just as simple, be there and know that, let people know I'm still in business. That is the basics for anybody's marketing campaign is a foundation of a continuous message. When you have a continuous message, then people will remember who you are and accept the fact that you're your stay and will start remembering your slogans. They'll do like this. If you're Morton Salt, they've been here for years. We know when it rains, it pours. If you're uh, Allstate, well, people know that I'm in good hands with Allstate. That's where these slogans come in that we talked about earlier. But we have to keep sending those messages out there, and we have to do it low cost because we don't have a lot of money. So I'm telling you now, I want you to have a continuing, structured, low cost message machine going out different ways to your customers. Now, when you have something special comes along that you really need to promote a product or, or a certain holiday or something new in your plan coming in, and you want to spend some expensive ads, you want to put some pictures, buy some more space, put a lot more of them out there, and then you don't have to spend more money. And those ads will cost a lot more money. So let's just look right here. So let me go back and say that low-cost campaign, 27 ads at 5 and $10, was costing me $270 a month. I'm getting my message out there continuously, and if, if, if I keep that going on, I can afford that. And if some of that's wasted, it's wasted, but it's not a big number. But now we're moving into expensive ads, and if I put $125 ads and $55 ads out there, I'm going to spend $2,465 on that one marketing campaign. And I'm not going to do that. I don't have that kind of money. But I've learned if I've got my regular low-cost campaign going on, I don't have to spend the big bucks to be recognized and accepted. I can just fill in and meter in my nine times rule into my regular advertising plan 
and keep my costs down because people will accept those ads without having to see them nine times now because they accept me as someone that's established in business. And I can do that. And instead of spending $2,465, I'll spend $750. I can afford that for a special deal and save $1,700. Lord, I wish I had known this plan a long time ago. I really do. So you keep that in mind. It's a way to make it happen. So this is real time, and it's real life, and it's right now. These things are working for folks that know how to use them. I want you to know how to use them. Uh, here's a good example. Uh, we're running a uh, it, right now is, is March, it's tiller time. So we got a special program going out for the spring season for tiller sales. Facebook, uh, use Facebook and, and, and use their boosting when you know what you're doing. Uh, when you get set, be real careful with that, but sometimes that is a good way to get into a special market without having to spend those real big bucks. Uh, use uh, visuals, use your logos, use your same sayings. What does that logo right there say? Since 1959, service that satisfies. That's been our slogan for a long time. I want you to have a slogan, okay? Something that you can stay with. Use graphics, use colors, make it happen for yourself. Uh, put your prices in there. Let people know that, that, that you've got some negotiating room, that you will work with them on different things. Uh, be willing to boost your post again. Have that database of email addresses and use them to send people to your landing pages at your website. Make it happen for you. You can do it. Use uh, steps to help people say, buy now, let's do this thing. Brag on yourself. Let folks know that you are a great person to do business with. And you're saying to yourself, Steve, I don't know if I'm a great person to do business with. Well, I'm telling you that you, you need to be and you're going to be, so you need to tell the public because no one else is going to brag on you except you. Your competitors sure aren't going to brag on you what a great place you are to do business with. I will, or they love you. But you need to say it and put little ads on your own web pages that say, hey, good folks to do business with, and give them some reasons why. Let them know you've got a good shipping campaign. And if you're a veteran or a woman-owned business, let folks know that because that will absolutely be a common denominator with a lot of folks. And if you're planning your campaign, know the email is important. Know that uh, regular first class mail is important for some business, but emailing is important. Did you know that you just don't need to send out email blasts, but you need to plan the day and the time that they go out? You know, just think about yourself. When you wake up in the morning, uh, especially on a Monday morning, you got all the, the email that came out over the weekend, so you just blow through that. Well, if your ad was a part of those mail that came in over the weekend, there's a good chance it'll get deleted before it's ever looked at. So if you think about the day and the time of day that your email is going to get to that customer, there's a, it has everything to do with whether it get read or not or seen or comprehended. So I look at my customers, the folks that buy my stuff, and I think about whether I'm going to send them to them on Mondays or Fridays or such as that because I don't send them three times. I don't make sure they get a chance to see it at least three times. Uh, because of the uh, 27 times rule. I don't think about the time of day that I'm sending. Do I want them to open that email just as they're getting ready to go home in the afternoon? Do I want them to open that email before they start a weekend? Do I want them to open that email later on Monday afternoon after they've blown everything else out of the way and then send them another one on Wednesday or Thursday to remind them? We think about that. You be shrewd and you be mindfulness, okay? Google ads and your ads on Google is a good way to get a, a, just a free website working for you. Tell people where you are. Uh, give a chance for people to give you uh, reviews such as that. Uh, get your pictures up there, free picture posting. It's like a, another free website almost. These are some examples that I'm using uh, at my uh, business on Google. The YouTube videos are critical, absolutely critical. Put them to work. I'll send you lots of samples on that. You can make your own videos and I can help you enhance them. All that ties into a structured marketing campaign. And I've done all this talk now for 15 minutes building it up. 
because it needs to be built up and you want it. But I can't leave you here without telling you the most important thing. What blows away the 27 times rule just like that? What blows it away so quickly? It is that one raving fan customer. Because one raving fan customer can say to his friend, man, CC is a great lady to do business with, and I suggest you go uh, spend your money with her. She's got what you want. It tastes good. It's just right. Now, you don't have to say that 27 times. You don't have to say that nine times. A raving fan customer can communicate one time and send the customer right straight to you without a single ad being purchased. And without you spending one penny to buy a raving fan customer. You had to plant those brain seeds and you had to say the three sentences to them. That is powerful. That's why I spent so much time on it. And in good times and bad times, and maybe you're flat broke, you don't have any marketing money left, all you're doing is trying to keep you, your nose above up in the air, you're drowning. The people that will help you get out of a jam are those raving fan customers whether you've got money or not. Because you can stay in touch with them, and they're still buying, and if they decide they're going to buy from you, you got to keep you in business. We want to put into our marketing plan our story. We just don't want to be a web page. We don't want our fancy web pages to be full of flowers and colors and all that stuff without our story being in there without your video and your personal picture being there. People want to do business with another human being. And that's the people that do business with time after time. They'll be doing business with Darcy. They'll be doing business with Darcy the florist. They won't say, I want to continue to do business with theflorist.com. That's the key. That is the key. That's why I like Sarenka's uh, uh, presentation. She's about her face, her voice, uh, showing people how to do things. Critical. Tell your story. It changes the way we feel, the way we think, the way we act, and the way that we behave. You want to tell your story and let them know you're doing business with an individual. Tell them what you did when you were a little girl. Tell them what got you excited. Relate to what they do, did. Tell them I started my lawn mowing business because I used to push, push out, push more all over the neighborhood to make uh, $2 a yard. Tell them the story about how you enjoy uh, doing a pop-up stand and meeting people and talk, talking to them and telling them about different recipes and things. I love this picture right here because this gentleman is out here marketing his tool with his story. What do you see there? You see there that he's got his eggs up there and he's got them for sale. And there's some good stories that go along with this uh, that I'll tell you on another time. But this fellow, whatever your story is, you tell it and you get out there and you be yourself. And that's what we want to do. I love it when our, our classmates uh, open up their own businesses. This is one that's opened up in Clannan. And this young lady right here, uh, this is her second storefront business that she's opened in downtown Clanton. So happy to see success like this. This started out with a soap shop in the back room of a bed, in, in the back side of a bedroom in her home. And now she's got two full size businesses that are doing really well in rural Saxon County. So proud of them. Keeping it all together and keeping it structured, the way to help you remember this is consider the marketing the salt. We need to use a lot of it. We need to spread it out. Salt's not very expensive. We don't want to put too much out there. But when it's time that we need to spice up our game, we'll call that the pepper, and that will be your advertising. Your advertising will always be a part of the marketing. The marketing budget is the big budget. The advertising is just a piece of that pie. So when you're doing your, your, uh, your business planning, that's, that's what we'll consider. What's the difference? A lot of people can play this different ways, but for our uh, course this time, we want to say that marketing is the long-term view, putting out stuff all the time that keeps us alive in our, in our community space. Advertising is going to be targeted for the short term. Next week, we're going to talk about 
how to help customers find us. And we're going to do that specifically with these two words, having a good base of marketing, but how to use that advertising money to really bring them in so that our business is like a magnet that brings them to us. So what can we do? What do I need to do tomorrow? What do you need to do tomorrow? Get those mission and vision statements done. When you're working on that, you're working on a good future for your business. Make sure that you've got a cell phone number connected to your business because I'm amazed with how many people want to do text, want to do business with text messages. So get your mind thinking that you want to have a cell phone number. You don't need to know what DBA is all about. DBA, doing business as, as an alias this and uh, different names that. It's so much more than that. It's important for you business-wise to be able to name your business different names without having to set up a new bookkeeping system. But it's more important that DBA is going to help you market your products with different trade styles and, and brands and slogans, and knowing how that works is really a big deal. We'll talk about that some tonight, but a lot next week. You need that menu of services and products. Write them down. What are you going to be selling? And approximately what are they going to be costing? If you don't have a menu, how somebody going to know what they can buy from you? So you put it down, and it will change. It'll change, but get started on it, okay? In business, people, your customers will ask you the same questions over and over and over again. Not the same customer asking you the same question, but every new customer that comes in will be asking you the same question. Start making a list of those questions and put some answers to them, some really good answers. And that will help you immensely. Number one, it'll make you feel really good about what you're ready to tell that customer. Number two, you can use that information on your website and on your brochures. And number three, if you're training an employee, it's an excellent training tool for you to have for them. Master your Facebook. Master your Facebook first. Knowing how to use it, what makes it work, and it's a challenge because it's changing all the time. And then move right straight from your personal page to a business page. You haven't spent a penny yet. But it is a way that you can start staying in touch with us, <laughs> and the customers can find you. Your Internet presence is going to be a must. All the different things you can do on the Internet are incredible from from scanning things to other things. So if you haven't been there, it's time to start thinking about it. I've introduced some ideas to you tonight that you hadn't thought about before, but I'm also, I don't keep saying that the world needs to think that all prices are negotiable and you need to have that mindset too so that you are willing to talk to customers and hear what they have to say about what needs, arrangements need to be made so they can buy your product. You need that open here. I have a way to do it. Have you got your business cards yet? Send, I want a copy of your business cards. Send them, and I can use them up here and show them and brag on them. Get your business cards ready to do business. Here's a copy of mine, different ways. And, and it's okay. You're going to make some mistakes on it. Um, my business cards, after I've been in business 30 years, I did a brand new one and forgot to put my, uh, my, my um, email address on it, so I had to go back and make changes. But it's okay. But get started. You're going to make some mistakes. Do some brochures. A brochure is so handy to hand out to customers, and it's also an instant uh, web page or a mailer that you can use or a flyer. Think about doing that. Next week, we're going to zoom in on customer target groups because that is a key factor on how to uh, help customers find you and how not to waste a lot of advertising money. I want, a, I want some videos from you guys. And I don't push hard. I'm not going to be mad at you if you don't send them. But I, I know you're going to be disappointed in yourself if you can't do an introduction video to help people uh, know you and know your business and do business with you individually. So get your cell phone out. Get your grandchildren to help you if you have to. Just look right in it. 20 minute, 20 second video, 20 seconds. Hey, I'm so and so and I'm in business and I sure appreciate you giving me a call or sending me an email. The story. Just a great big smile, and hearing your voice is a amazing uh, door opener for you to start doing business with someone if they if they know you uh, personally and have seen you. You can do it. I'm telling you, you can do it, and by golly, we'll help you do it. So remember the three times rule that'll help you get started. 
I'm skipping some things here because if you're selling service, if you're not selling products, and that's all I've talked about tonight, and I know that, I apologize. But if you're a nonprofit or you're selling service, there's different uh, things that you will need to consider. And maybe in the first two sessions that maybe some of you have missed, I'll be glad to send you back some uh, refresher information to help you. But if you're selling time for money, then your calendar is your most important tool. And I want you to set your uh, business plan up uh, based on four days a week and four weeks a month. And that way, you know, make your profit and do your business plan, your critical work during four days, and that's going to give you three days to, one, have a life, to, number two, go to church and spend some time with your family, and, number three, to make up for mistakes that were made or to go out and start new customers or new businesses. But you just do a good business plan uh, four days. Again, if you missed the first two sessions and you want me to send you some information on those, I'll be glad to. Your your secret weapon, now I learned this a long time ago, I'm glad to share it. Your secret weapon that will encourage people to pay you more money for the same product than they buy from other people will be learning what your value added, what your value added features are. <clears throat> and we want to help you develop what you can do better without raising your cost to help you move forward. What are the value added features? Getting close to wrapping it up now. Remember this fellow? This is Bubba Blue. And they show the Forrest Gump movie all the time on TV now. Remember Bubba Blue and Forrest? He was his Vietnam veteran uh, friend uh, who passed away on the battlefield. Uh, just a, a really great young man. But when I watched that movie, I, he was the first introducer to me of doing business as, as a marketing tool. Because Bubba Blue knew how to sell shrimp. He knew all about shrimp, all the different ways that people wanted shrimp. And he told Forrest Gump that when they got out of service and they started their own shrimp company, they were to offer shrimp to people any way they wanted it. Coconut shrimp, shrimp soup, uh, pan-fried shrimp, all the different ways of shrimp. Doing business as, taking one word shrimp and doing business as, salad shrimp, pan-fried shrimp, and we're going to do that with your products. You're going to do that with your products so more people will find you on the Internet and come and do business with you because you, you mastered, you were mindful, and you were shrewd about the way you use doing business as to help you. Remember, most advertising not work, and the way you can make it accountable is the L and the H. The L stands for the look. The H stands for the hook. That'll be a question next week. The L stands for the look. The H for the hook. The look is making your ads worthy and qualified to hold someone's attention. We have to hold their attention because people won't stay with you but a second. We do it with colors, with floral designs, with good words, with mainly with videos and such as that. The H is the hook, and the hook it's the call to action. What do you got in that ad that brings them to you right now, that makes them want to do business right now? Is it a coupon? Is it a discount? Is it a timing? But you have to tell them, and you have to let the customer know, hey, it's time to call me right now. It's time to do it. We need to know who our buying groups are and the, and the focus on those. Next week, we'll get into how to choose them and how to organize them, whether it's teachers or veterans or American Indians or uh, folks from Timbuktu don't care. We just need to help our, our customers find us uh, on the Internet and, and, and uh, understand we've got a common denominator. You, your business, and the Internet, they're all together right now. And in marketing, we've got to do that. The, the Internet's not everything, but it's a whole lot to do with uh, folks that are going to do something out of town. Your mobile page, your business at Google, your landing pages, testimonials, YouTube channel, using the right kind of publications to advertise in, and that will help you get it up and running. It's March. <laughs> this is spring in your step. It's new seasons, new products, fresh air. Bye-bye cold weather. Spring showers will bring us some Mayflowers. Hello, sunshine. Spring is sprung. 
the deals are near, they're here, springtime's in the air, and remember that early bird is the one that gets the worm. All these slogans are so powerful and will make people think about maybe, hey, I need to do business with you. So let's get excited. Let's find the experience, the great experience of having a magic marketing moment. When is that moment? That's when you've made the deal and you go back to that customer and say, I want to make sure you're 100% satisfied. And so you'll tell your friends and family to come and do business with us, and they will. And then you get to ask them, what's next? And you write that information down, and you plan your next few weeks or months or year marketing campaign based on the feedback your customers are telling you, and you don't know what's next, and you'll feel better about it. We want to assure you, Ruthie and I both, that your success is our goal. You're the most important people in the room, and we want, I hope you've enjoyed the presentation tonight because we want you to keep coming back for, for all of our sessions. But uh, if you finish up uh, in, in, uh, in this course, you can get some certificates and learn a whole lot. That's the main thing, and do it as often as you'd like to do it. So thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to work for you and with you, and I'd like to invite you, if you'd like, to make any comments that you would, and we'll sit here and chit-chat a little bit and, and uh, go for it. Joanna, let me ask you to go to chat, because I don't have your email address and don't know how to send information to you. I appreciate you being with us, but give me your full name and email address if you don't mind, or email it to me. Uh, we'd lo love to be able to do that. Any comments from anyone? Steve, this is Ruthie. I just wanted to say thank you so much. I love all of the information tonight. And I will be utilizing it myself and <laughs> some of our small business small strategies as well. So thank you. It was a boatload, wasn't it? <laughs> it is a lot, but it's really good information for sure. Yeah, so, so thank you so much. And these emails that are coming to you has everything we talked about in them. And you can save those in your business journal files and go back to them year after year and, and pull these slogans and techniques out and maybe just uh, really light up your marketing campaign and make a big difference for you. We're happy to share them with you and, and want you to use them. And I appreciate the folks that put them on the internet for us. Lenina, how are you doing? It's good to have you on board with us tonight. And I see you sharing your email address. That's great. Mr. Carver? Yes. Yeah, this is Joanna. I, hey, I've been receiving the emails. They're coming to my business email, and I sent it last week. Last week, I wasn't able to attend. My father had um, knee replacement surgery. Uh, but anywho, I'm trying to play catch up, but I did send it. So I want to make sure that you have it. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I just I, I need that last name in town and an email, then I can make sure there's a lot of Joannes and Joannas out there, and it's, it's easy to get them confused. So thank you so much, and thank you for being with us tonight. Mr. Carver, yeah. this is Teray. Um, this is my first time. I've missed the first two lessons, and I wanted to know if you can uh, provide your email and phone number or that you started with in the beginning of this session. I'll be glad to, and I'll send you our links to our videos from the first two sections and the and the handout. So you can, if you want to spend some time, you can catch right up and get on board. Okay, okay. great. I'm looking forward to it. Where are you located? I'm in Concord. Fantastic. Okay, Cabarrus County? Yes, that's right. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Glad to have you on board. Uh, Rogers, it's glad to have, or Carrie, whichever it is, it's glad to have you with us tonight. It doesn't look like your mic's on, but uh, we're glad to have you. Where are you located in that 704 area? I'm in Peace Land, North Carolina. Oh, okay. So you were with us last week then. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Is that Moore County or Montgomery? No, it's Anson County. In Anson, okay, close to Waysboro. Good. Well, thanks for joining us. Yes, I hope you enjoyed the session. I, I enjoyed it. Yes, thanks. Thank you. And Sarita, thank you for joining us tonight, and congratulations on being our most uh, 
senior member of the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates. Hey, Steve. Hey. I'm, I'm doing all right. Thank you for the honor. Yeah. Have you had a chance to spend any time on the certificates? Yeah, I started working on them today. I'll probably finish them up tomorrow. I'll probably give you a call. I'll let you know this. Sarita does our certificates for us. All right. I'll be looking forward to getting those. Okay. Rachel told me to tell you hey. And give Rafer my regards and a hug. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, have a good night. Okay. All right, I'm going to be sending you some samples of different ways that I'm going to be using the spring uh, in my uh, spring uh, series in my advertising at CarverEquipment.com. I'd appreciate it if y'all would share with me what you're doing with it as well, and show Ruthie and I that uh, that you're putting this stuff to work, and we'll help you all that we can. If there's any other comments? Thank you, Steve. Well, that was a lot of um, great material. It's just. You know, sometimes I look at it and you're like, oh, God, this is overwhelming. But every time I, like, just did what you said to do, even if I didn't understand it at the moment, it sort of evolved. And I, that's what I find myself doing every time I, I learn something new. Thank you, Doris. I'm looking so forward to meeting you personally and visiting with you and seeing what you're up to. Uh, let me mention to you all that you're lacking is, is sending me a, a quiz that get your official uh, academy membership and lot, some more certificates. And so try to find time to do that quiz and send it to me. It's open book. All right. Well, good night, everybody. Let me tell you that we are so blessed and we've got a springtime coming, warmer days. Uh, be the best person you can be. Remember that you're not on this track by yourself, that, uh, that uh, if you let Jesus ride along with you and talk to him, by golly, he might have some answers that you uh, that help you along. Um, we all need to count our blessings, don't we? So good night. Look forward to seeing you next uh, next Tuesday, and I'll be sending you lots of information by email tomorrow. Bye bye. He had already had a assorted. Thank you very much. <laughs>